Technically, here's uh, we're gonna jump right into what we're about to do. So this is low effort woodwind doubling jazz lords, and uh, if you are a sax player trying to play a B flat soprano clarinet for the first time, you are gonna try to do this on a saxophone. This is B flat. Not, it's not a. It sort of gets you a concert pitch would be a uh, D flat, but. This sort of gets you in the ballpark, but it's never going to play in tune. And maybe if you lip it down, you might be able to get away with it in fast passages. But, well, we're, we're really into it now. <laughs> Low effort, but, you know, I, I just had some coffee. And uh, I actually tried recording this earlier, and I was so caffeinated that I was literally too jittery to do this. So I was like, I might wait a few hours. So uh, we came back, and I'm still flying high, but I ate. So eating with caffeine, you're fine. Anyway... That's a ramble. Now we're in it. They want you to play clarinet. You're in jazz band, you're in big band, you get clarinet, you need to know how to put it together. And you don't want to comb through a bunch of YouTube videos with a bunch of people explaining really basic things for 30, like one basic concept for 30 minutes. You want all of it in an easy digestible, easily digestible, low effort format. Albano the Madman is your guy. These are so it's so nice. Now with the little clarinets and you can poke people and you point at them. It's great. Anyway, so B flat soprano clarinet. Few things you need to know. That I have a few different flavors here, as you can see. We have a couple of different materials. Some of the ones you're more than likely to run into. I don't have a metal clarinet. I had several at one point because I used to get them in, on eBay for like you know forty five dollars. I would fix them up and then just like sell them cheap. Like dirt cheap, of course, but then again, if you say if you if you buy something for forty five, fix it up for another thirty, spend like thirty dollars on materials, not counting your time, and then uh, you know ship it off for like one hundred and fifty bucks. You still made a little bit of profit, but anyway, uh, we do have uh, a few different flavors of clarinet that you will more than likely see in your in your jazz or whatever career. We also have an E flat soprano clarinet. And this is a funny one, and I kind of set it up real cheap, because I, I needed one for my own stuff, and I'm not playing in any symphony or, or studio orchestra at any point, so we'll, we'll get to that one, though. The uh, clarinet I've been playing as my main. I have two that I've been playing equally, but uh, we'll start with the one that's in my hand. This, uh, honestly, I have a tuning barrel. We're going to get into different types of equipment later. Uh, so I have a written out clarinet here. It's a hard rubber clarinet. I keep going to this. We'll we'll get to that. We'll get to that later. It's not correct, and I know it's not correct. Anyway, hard rubber clarinet. Still kind of a warm sound. The hard rubber doesn't react to temperature changes, so you won't find the. Uh, let's say you come in from from a, a freezing cold day. I live up in the Northeast in Boston. So our winters get cold and our summers get super hot and humid. Uh, this is great, especially if you do outdoor playing, because they won't. Uh, it doesn't. Uh, hard rubber doesn't expand and contract as much as wood does. It's still a natural material. It still breathes a bit, you know. But yeah, this has been uh, fine for all around playing, and we'll use this to show you some basic stuff to get you started. Okay, you get the clarinet in your hands. You just bought the clarinet. Um, regardless of what it is, there's a few things you're going to want to know. Clarinet. This is not a saxophone. There is a, it's sort of the same, but very different. First, armature. On a saxophone, you're playing more or less with the mouthpiece going pretty much straight into your mouth. You're going to notice, though, you're going to be playing quite flat if you do that. A clarinet goes in. And watch it, just you know, fire up YouTube and go watch some videos of some like classical orchestral clarinetists play. And you'll notice that they kind of have it kind of, for us, a kind of an extreme angle. So, 
it's just, that's the angle you play. You hold it more or less kind of a 45 degree angle, maybe a little higher or lower depending on comfort. And also, it's a tight embouchure. It's a very firm embouchure. And typically, regardless of what you set, set your saxophone up, clarinet likes harder, harder setups. It really does. So this is, a, this is a crystal mouthpiece, believe it or not. And it's an open tip. So I can actually go for... I don't know what the uh, comparison would be to. This is probably about the same as a 5JB Van Doren. This is our Por Marco Crystal, or I, I'm going to butcher that, but I'm butchering the name. But So I'm using uh, three V12s right now. I have a B45, but I need uh, fours on the B45. It's just, it's no, regardless of what you do with your embouchure, it's going to be super flat. Um, so starting at the top, embouchure, keep it here. You're singing e e e. That's the uh, you're voicing your notes. You know that's a good place to start. Um, I'm playing a a, a three V sixteen, uh, not V sixteen, uh, V twelve. Excuse me, a three V twelve, and it's a little soft. It's a little soft. I should probably be playing three and a halfs, but they like harder setups. So bear that in mind. You know, got a time to be. Uh, Time to be a big strong adult and uh, and and start start trying out some some harder setups to get that really nice really nice classical clarinet sound and uh, people tend to favor Van Dorns. Uh, I like the B forty five, but like I said, I have uh, I have uh, you know my the reads I have are too soft for it, so I'm gonna have to move up to fours on that piece. But uh, I like playing uh, I like the Rovner ligatures a lot. These uh, depending on the fit. And the age of the, uh, depending on the fit, um, you you won't have trouble with the teeth cutting into the top of the mouthpiece, and especially on this guy, I really wanted something fabric, so I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't really be scratching the glass too much. Eh, crystal is glass, if you if you never knew the distinction, but uh, okay. So we have that. So we want to know. Okay. So here's a pitfall that you're gonna fa fall into on this instrument, especially if you don't watch any videos and you you haven't you haven't taken a lesson yet, and you just kind of have it in your in your in your room, and you're just messing around. You're gonna do this, especially. I started on alto sax. Now, on alto sax, you play three fingers down. Now on the clarinet, it's like a it's like a recorder where you have to cover the uh, you have a, a thumb a thumb key in the back that you have to cover when you're playing in the lower register, which is called the Chamo register or Chamo Chamo whatever I don't care, but uh, so but three fingers down that is a G on saxophone and it's the same the same G it's a B flat concert. <laughs> Ah, there we go. It's a B flat concert, but the pitfall is on this instrument. This instrument is pitched in B flat. This here is C. Three fingers, and I touched on this in the. Uh, I believe I touched on it in the contralto video, so you can go check that out here or there or anywhere. So that's your first pitfall. So funny enough, the uh, Chalmo register matches up to the low register on an alto set. The Chalmo on the clarinet on the B flat soprano matches up perfectly with the uh, with the, the the E flat alto saxophone and that's your first pitfall. It does have a it has the same range. So you can think of this as the combined ranges of a alto and soprano sax, which is really cool. I mean it's a super huge range, but you're pitched when you activate the register key. If you add the and we call this a register key on clarinet, we don't call it an octave key. Because you don't get an octave when you play it. On a saxophone, you hit the octave key. You play a G. You play a G. One, two, three. You hit the octave key. You get a G, an octave above. Here, you're in twelfths. So, you have thumb. Always a thumb until you hit G. Which is actually, funny enough, open. No, no fingers down. No register key. Is G on this instrument. So that's going to mess you up. You got to bust out that close A book and start working on your sight reading. Now, when we add, so we have the alto sax, hit the octave key, octave up. Here, you do one, two, three, and the thumb. You get C on the clarinet. That's C. 
Now you add the register key. We're pitched in 12, so you're going to get a note a 12th above that. So you're going to get G or an F concert. <laughs> So a good exercise actually is when you first get your clarinet, you know, learn where your fingers are. The lowest note here is a is a written E. It's a, a concert D, and just go through chromatically and play the twelfths. So it's a good way to start getting warmed up and start figuring out how to voice all your notes going up the register. So yeah. So that's the second pitfall. This is not a saxophone. It will never be one. They may share a range, and maybe the lower register on this lines up with the alto sax, lines up with the alto sax, but they are very different instruments pitched in two different keys. So that's your second pitfall, and that's a pitfall that has hurt me for a very long time because I started on sax, and I didn't have any lessons on clarinet for a while after I bought it because I was still, a, it was still, I was like 15, maybe 16 when I bought a clarinet at the music store I was taking lessons in. So uh, you know. Just avoid that pitfall if you can't get to a private teacher right away. Second, some fingerings are not are not useful on this instrument. Now, on a saxophone, if we want to play R B flat on this instrument, it's E flat. We would use one and one. On clarinet, no, no. This is not this is not any fingering at all. It does kind of produce it kind of produces the note you want, but it's not. It, it's just not classically recommended. I don't know why that's a topic for someone else's video. However, on this instrument, we have trill keys here. And you might be staring at this and just wondering, what are these extraneous pieces of metal? Well, I'll show you each one as you go up. So the bottom one, starting here, is going to be your, your E-flat, B-flat key. That's, that's D. That's E flat. Now the rest of the rest of your key. So your next key is like it gets you and gets you the F to F sharp. So that's this key up, and you're gonna. And you're, there's no way on this particular instrument to play this and not hit this. So you open them both up and you get, so your thumb key here, that's F. To get an F sharp, the normal fingering is just one with no register key. So that's your second trill up. Third trill is uh, A to, it's A, so okay, we have to talk about this. So as we go up, G, okay, but if I go to G and then I put all my fingers back down, we're gonna get to we're gonna get to B in the clarion register. And we're wondering where our extra notes are. So just chromatically up, you have this wonderful system here. It's a throat register, technically, or what we're calling it. So we start at G, then to play G sharp, you add this side key here. Then, how this works is you don't pick your you don't really want to be picking your hand off so much. You just kind of want to roll. So from here, if you can see how this works, so if you want to go from G sharp to A, you just roll. You move your move your side of your finger. Move your I have mine kind of at the at the knuckle there, at the second joint, and I just kind of roll it up to the uh, A. And then to play A sharp B flat, you add the register key only with no thumb. And now, now that we're there, we're gonna work on the rest of these trill keys. So one of them is A is A to B flat or A to A sharp. Can be used for that. Or it can also be used for a trill from B flat to B. Because I'll show you what happens after we hit the B the B flat and we want to keep going chromatically up. So B flat to B, useful trill. And then you can do a B flat to C as well, adding this top one. And you can use it for the A as well. 
again, those are just trills. They don't really have a, a good full sound. They don't, they're not super in tune, but you know, they work as trills. Okay, so now we're going up the throat and we want to know where to go after. So I'm sitting on a B flat and I want to play the B. Now remember, we overblow 12. So you remember our lowest note is E. You add the register key and you're going to overblow to the B. Now to go from B flat to B, this is what we call the break and it sucks and you, the only way to get through it is to practice and also a good habit to start forming is leaving as many fingers on your right hand down as you can to, to depending on where you're going from the B flat or the A or the or the uh, or the G sharp you know or the G depending on where you're going it makes it a lot easier if you start if you think ahead if you read ahead and you start leaving fingers on like if I want to go from uh, B flat to C like I have almost all of my fingers down right there or B flat to B I already have the finger depressed here and I have my fingers real close by ready to go because if I add them all if I add them all immediately the problem is that note will go very flat and if especially if it's a held note we don't want to do that and sometimes I forget to do it too but you know it's part of learning bust out the close A book and start working on some etudes and just practice slow but okay so we've crossed the break so now we're gonna mess around with all this stuff all this stuff right here so we have a whole mess of keys what do they all do so first we're gonna start our E B key which is is played in two different spots on the clarinet you have one here this is one B key and this is the other and it's to make certain passages involving your A flat A flat uh, E flat Especially if you have to go, if you have to go from B flat to E flat, there's no rollers here. On, on most clarinets, they don't have any type of alternate, alternate uh, A flat, E flat. And I'll show you a more common, this one, a more common layout. So you have your A flat, E flat key here. And on most clarinets, you'll see a layout like this. And you have an alternate here. So you could play that note in both fingers. And why that's important is for playing passages like a simple C minor chord you if you don't have any type of alternate key and on, honestly I love this clarinet but the placement of this sucks it, it was it seems more of an afterthought than anything and I rarely use it so this is actually kind of a good clarinet to demonstrate this if I want to go from C flat to E flat on this clarinet forget this is even here there's only one way to do it and I have to finger C in my left hand so you have a left hand C or F key in the lower register C F here right here see if make sure you can see it boom boom you have so you have your E here and here you have C here and here you it's just slow practice a good thing a good thing to practice is when you practice scales just don't don't favor one side over the other practice one scale going up Practice the scale going up using the keys in your left, in your right, and then practice it going down in the left, and then reverse it, and then kind of just switch it up a bit. So now we have our A flat, E flat key, which is on most clarinets you're going to find, especially ones you're going to first buy when you're starting out. There's only going to be one key, and you can't roll. There's no rollers here. I mean, I've seen people do it. I've done it, but it's, it, it's not, it doesn't work. You certainly can't do it fast. You can even throw, you can even hold the C key down the left hand C and do a uh, and do a for a trill. You can even hold it down to do that. I mean trills, we're not so worried about. We're just making sure the notes are the notes have to be in tune. But uh, his tonal quality of the two notes tends to suffer a little bit. But uh, you know we we have to make uh, we have to make certain. Uh, certain certain uh, uh oh there's a there's a beautiful there's a oh, certain uh whatever they have certain things we have to do to to, ma to make it or certain concessions thank you thank you brain anyway so okay so we did that in our c sharp c sharp f sharp is this key here you have one here you have one here 
The only way to get used to it is just sit with your finger in chart, sit with the close A book or any book really, and just slowly work the stuff out. Go slow, keep going fast. And then, you know, you keep going up the register. Now you have, uh, you have a key here. Usually this is just for F sharp. You can play F sharp, F sharp, uh, F sharp B, which is another, another fun, another fun little thing. You could play it like this, or you could play it with the middle finger, kind of like a, kind of like a saxophone. You know, they work. They both play relatively well in tune, and you can use them both. Keep going up. That's up to the C. Now, one thing to, one thing to note. And I'll show you my other clarinet in a second because it's uh, it's pretty cool. On a normal clarinet, when you depress your uh, C sharp, G sharp key here, you can't play any of the notes below. It's not an automatic. It's not a. Uh, it's not a. Uh, it's not an automatically closed when you add these fingers like a flute. It's just to make certain finger certain fingerings in the altissimo register pop out better this way. But you can't, if I play G sharp. I, I can't, it's good for effects, but you can't play anything below. You have to, you can't cheat. There's no cheating like you can do on a sax. You have to just release the key if you want to keep going up and down, you know. But uh, that's normal technique and normal good habits. And uh, I did not develop those. So I have to, uh, I have to relearn. Now I'll show you the, uh, I'll show you this other guy here, the summer. And the only reason I'm not going to play it, I'm going to play it later on, but uh, not at the moment. But this one has has a uh, has a articulated G sharp, G sharp, C sharp. So watch what happens. So I'm pressing my G sharp key. Normally it wouldn't close if I had the fingers, but boop, 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 boop. So uh, it, it's a. Uh, I think it was just a trail. It's technically called the trail and this is another trail key for that here. Uh, we'll get to this clarinet because it's kind of a fun thing. But uh, this has an automatic G, it has a uh, uh, articulated G sharp, C sharp mechanism and it's kind of cool and also goes down to a, uh, goes down to a low E flat. But we'll, again, we'll touch on that. So we're going up, up and up and up. Okay, now we're in altissimo register and altissimo is pretty simple on a clarinet. Get you started, get you up to the G. So we do one, two, always with the thumb and uh, the register key and the uh, thumb hole here covered and open. Then uh, two, three, one, two, and the uh, E flat key. And then pick that finger up. Add the trill here for E flat. For E, usually. And you'll have to adjust for intonation, of course, but it's uh, just uh, two and three. And the E flat, I still hold it down because it helps bring the these notes tend to be flat on this clarinet, so it helps them bring them to bring them into pitch. Yeah, and so uh, so we have our F, F sharp, and G is just a thumb. For me, it works pretty well and allows me a little bit of fluidity up there. Now let me. Uh, so we have clarinet. So now that's that takes you through the whole range. It shows you a couple of pitfalls that you might run into as you as you start learning this instrument. So now we'll introduce you to some of the other materials. So you've been hearing this uh, hard rubber clarinet. So that's a uh, hard rubber natural material still sounds pretty warm and uh, it's a great option if you're not so careful with your instruments and or you do a lot of an out you do a lot of outdoor playing. Um, this will not crack unless you really try to beat someone with it. So now, so that's one material you might run into. Written hour, very good clarinet. Excellent clarinet. Sounds great. Now this one is a wooden clarinet. Another one you will see the most the most likely you're going to see if you're looking for a something better than a student instrument, you will see a wood clarinet made out of wood. Grenadilla, most common, but most people, even if you don't play clarinet, know that. It's got a, definitely got a warmer sound, but here's the uh, thing. You have to be very careful with these instruments because if they get even a little cold and you're blowing hot air, causes the, uh, I, I can't remember if it's the outside expands faster than the inside or the inside expands faster than the outside, and it basically results in a crack. There's plenty of physics videos out there 
um, telling you about it. But anyway, so yeah, if you pull it out, especially if it's a little cold, you want to warm it up in your hands a little bit. <laughs> Now, I'll, I'll demonstrate that little, uh, oh yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty cool having that low E flat. And the reason they make clarinets like this is basically not everybody, now you have an A clarinet as well, which I don't, but you have an A clarinet, which was a, is a very common double, you know, cause no clarinetist likes playing in five sharps, you know, six sharps, like crazy, anything more than, clarinet hates anything more than uh, for a key signature with four sharps or flats, it just hates it. So they have an E clarinet to make those play easier, it's a step below, a half step below your normal B flat clarinet, but not every clarinetist needs such crutches. I, I, if anybody needs a crutch, it's me, by the way. But uh, not not everybody who needed nor wanted to buy another instrument. So the lowest note on an A clarinet would be a concert uh, concert C sharp D flat. So they just added the note, and having a little bit of extra note helps the lower notes speak a little speak a little better. But other than that, it's just uh, this is an old Selmer De Pizet clarinet, um, probably from the 30s, maybe the 40s. It just has some extra key work. It has that alternate uh, E flat, A flat key in the left hand. Um, we have that articulate G sharp mechanism, so I can do this. It's pretty, pretty nice to have, very handy if you like to cheat like me. And then you have, uh, you have another trill key here. Not very useful, but it is there if you if you want. And then you have your uh, B F sharp uh, key here as well. Um, you can also play. Uh, you could play the E flat, E flat, B flat also by doing this. This you don't use this because it tends to be pretty sharp. Is the major problem. So that's your that's your standard wooden clarinet, and also. What I recommend you start on, find yourself, in all honesty, find yourself an old Bundy. Like, I I just had this, I, I repaired it a long time ago, and I just never got rid of it. It doesn't sound bad. This is a plastic instrument. It's a, it's an old signet. I it's a USA made signet, so it's more than likely probably made by Con. It's a larger bore, so it sounds decent. But if you're gonna start on clarinet and you're just looking to pick up something to get you started, so find a you set a, you set up even a plastic clarinet with a decent mouthpiece, and it's gonna sound fine. It it really is. It'll be good good enough. You'll have to, you, again, clarinets do not play perfectly in tune. No clarinet ever made will ever play perfectly in tune. There's lots of small adjustments you have to make. You have to learn your instrument. You get used to it. You play it in tune. Work out with a tuner. Always tuner, metronome. But... Okay, maybe it's not in the best condition. But you get the, you get the point. It doesn't really matter what you start on so long as you're willing to put into... Everything comes down to practice. Now, we also have, so we have a clarinet in A, which I do not have, sadly, but there's no need for me to have one, so why? But a clarinet that you will commonly see as a double is this little e flat clarinet right here. And this is funny. This is a funny little clarinet, because this was... Get ourselves ready. Make sure you reads what. A lot of guys like the plastic reeds. I could never get them to work for me. Yeah. So this is a uh, this is an E flat soprano, and we'll talk a little bit about this. Super so this is a hard rubber instrument like my uh, like my Rittenauer, and I believe by they're made by the same company, except this one is unbranded. So uh, I got it for 125 bucks on uh, on on Amazon, and you can hear it on this link. It actually you can play it in tune, but E flat clarinets. 
It, all the same exact same things. This is pitched in E flat, as I said. Um, all the same pitfalls you'll fall into this clarinet, except you know your keys are a little smaller. So if you got big old fat sausage hands, um, you're going to require a lot of practice and a lot of finesse to uh, to get it to get it right. But. <laughs> That's all you need to hear of that because I, I, it gets better the more I practice with it, but after not practicing it all day, it's best to just give it a toot, put it on the sand. But that's a hard rubber clarinet. Again, hard rubber, wood, plastic, regardless of how you set the thing, regardless of what you got, the equipment shouldn't matter. Just learn the instrument and learn how to play it in tune. Get a decent, invest a little money, especially if you get, there's plenty of cheap wooden clarinets. You get No Blaze, you got Boozy and Hawks. Um, and you even find professional Selmers from the 50s that haven't been completely destroyed. Like, there's Series 9 and 10 clarinets for like well under a thousand bucks. That's a good, solid professional clarinet. Well under what you'd pay for an R13. And, you know, if you just want a nice clarinet, let's say you've been practicing for a while you want something nice but you don't want to spend a lot of money get a Selmer Selmer 9 or 10 those are great a center tones excellent uh, this is earlier this one guy here is earlier and it does have some scars there's some ancient repair cracks and whatnot but I mean it still plays fine you know but honestly it's not gonna last forever it's wood so that's why I was doing a lot of outdoor playing I got the hard rubber and I got this hard rubber hard rubber uh, ether as the uh, cool kids like to call it so, you know, those will last as long as I don't destroy them with my big man, big old, big old bare hands, you know, then uh, we'll be fine. But yeah, regardless of what material you have, you just learn, you learn the instrument, practice with a tuner, learn the quirks. Every instrument's going to have something different going on. And, you know, you just get better and better. It shouldn't be a scary instrument. It's just, if you started on sax, it's just different. It's a totally, you can't think of it as anything but a clarinet. And it's pretty much all I got. So this is a, a medium effort, in reality, a medium effort video, but there was a lot to talk about. But now we covered the clarinet. And if you want history, all sorts of that other wonderful stuff, there's plenty of, plenty of uh, places to go on YouTube, you know. Plenty of musicians, millions of different styles, you know, to play it in. Just have fun and go search. And, you know, like and subscribe. Check out the website. And, you know, we're going to be doing... Uh, so, this is the last video in the uh, Low Effort Woodwood Doubling Clarinet Series. And we're moving on to the saxophones next. We're going to do saxophones, then flute. And flute's, flute's special to me. But we'll get there when we get there. Alright? Thanks, everybody, for checking me out. Jazz Lords, love you all. Have a good... Have a good... Whatever. Have a great day, evening, night. Like, comment, subscribe, all that wonderful stuff. And uh, yeah, see you later.